Today we're doing 12-2, graphing different functions, identifying our domain and range in both the equation and on the graph, and our vertical line test. Is it a function? Determining if it's a function based on the vertical line test. Okay? All right. Uh, homework is page 545, 1 through 4 odd, 5 through 14 all, and 15 through 29 odd. All right. Our domain is our set of inputs. Okay. These are also other words we call them. Our x's. Okay. Any x value. Our range is the set of outputs or our y's on a graph. A function is a rule that describes a dependent relationship between two quantities, and we can identify it as a function if there are no repeated x's. For every member of the domain, there's exactly one member of the range. That means no repeated x's, okay? So if I have a table, I can't have the same x repeat. All right, so the way we can tell if it's a function on a graph is we can do a vertical line test. Okay, so I'm going to place my line on the graph, and I'm going to run a vertical line through the actual um, graph. Now, this was not a good one because it's not really. Um, if I ran it across the line, there's no point, no point at any, at the same given, in, at the same given point in time, it does not cross this line at two times. So this is a function. Okay. Let's see, here we go. You can see it never crosses the line at two times in the same moment in time. So it's a function. It is a function. Try the next graph. Okay? As I run my vertical line through here, it does not go through the red line at two times in the same moment. So this, too, is a function. Oops. I don't know what happened there. Let's go back. There we go. Let's try my animations. There's something wrong with it. So on the next one, as you can see, now, if I were to run my vertical line through, it crosses at multiple, infinite points, here and here and here. In fact, I'm going to write... I'm going to make a table of these points. Okay, just make a table of some of these points. So I'll make my table, and you'll see here's our x, here's our y, and here the first one is 0, comma, uh, it's 2 across, 0 up, and then I've got 2 across, and it's 1 up, and then I've got 2 across, and it's 2 up. And you can see, when we have a vertical line, you will have mul x's that, that repeat multiple times. If I were to make the make a a table here, <coughs> you'll see it's zero and oh it's zero across and two up. And it's one across and two up. And two across and two up. So it doesn't matter if the y's repeat, this is a function. But when the x's repeat, this is not a function. Okay? <clears throat> Next one, let's try here. Now, this looks like it might not work, but this is a parabola. And as we watch our vertical line, it's always at least slanted somewhat, so it never crosses the same point on the red line at it doesn't cross two points at the same given moment in time, so it is a function. Here's where you can really see. Now in this case, as I run my vertical line through, 
you can see that it crosses the graph at two places in the same moment in time, so this is not a function. Okay? Not a function. Okay, let's try the next one. Running my vertical line. As I run it all the way across, it never crosses at two points in the same moment. As long as there's a slant like this, or like this, it's not vertical, then it will be a function. Okay, let's try the next one. This one is not a function, because it crosses at two points in the same moment in time. The next one is not a function. Okay? Now, let's look at all the different ways we talked about functions. Um, so let's talk about what this map really means. This really means 3 comma 7, 4 comma 7, 5 comma 8, and 6 comma 8. Or we could even make that into a table. None of my x's repeat, so that is a function. Okay, I'd like you to pause the recording and try the next couple on your own. All right, let's check our work. So number two, as I run my vertical line through, it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. There's no vertical line part of it. Number three, as I run my vertical line through it, you can see it crosses here, here, and here, so it is not a function. Number Number four, as I make a table, what this really represents are the ordered pairs, five and negative one, and five and negative two. We can see right there, six, negative three, seven, negative four, we can see that the x is repeat, so it's not a function. All right, now, talking about the domain. When I ask that question for you to state the domain, what I'm asking you is what is x allowed to be? When we have fractions, we have fractions and we have radicals. We have different rules. The rule for fractions is the denominator, the overall denominator cannot equal zero. The rule for radicals is under the radical, it cannot, it can't be less than, uh, it has to be greater than zero, zero or greater. Okay, whatever is in there it has to be greater than zero. So whatever's underneath here has to be zero or bigger. Why? Because you can't have a negative, no negatives under the radical. Okay, so in this case we would say x is an element, um, x is such that, we're going to use our our notation, x is such that it cannot equal um, it's an element of the reals, and x cannot equal zero here, okay? x cannot equal zero. Now, number two is a radical, so I can't have a negative there. My negative numbers end at zero. It can equal zero under the radical. Zero is a perfect square. So now we're going to be doing uh, y. I can take what's under there, and I have to set it bigger than or equal to zero. It can equal zero. It can't. Sometimes people turn this around. When they turn it around, they really don't understand what we're talking about. They're just memorizing it. It can't be a negative number in here. So what would not make it? It can be zero or bigger. So to get the x alone, end up with x is greater than or equal to zero. So x is an element of the reals. And, sorry, that's supposed to be a comma. 
x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, in the next one, it's not that x can't equal 0. It's that the whole denominator cannot equal 0 because that's the fraction rule. So here we go. We, set, we say x is an element of the reals. Except, I have to set that, x minus 4, um, what would make that equal 0? Okay, so I'm adding 4, I'm adding 4, x cannot equal 4 in this case. x cannot equal 4. Pause the recording, try the next one on your own. So here we go. I'm setting it greater than or equal to zero. Okay, this whole thing underneath here has to be bigger than zero. So I'm doing eight plus x equals zero is greater than or equal to zero. Subtract the eight. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. Meaning, if x is greater than or equal to negative eight. So, if x is negative 7, that's a bigger number, I would end up with a 1 in here. If x is negative 6, I would end up with a 2 in here. That's okay. That would make it a real number. Okay? I just can't have the negative under the radical, the overall value. Okay? All right. Pause the recording and try the next few on your own. Now let's check our work. So for the next one, we would say uh, x is an element of the reals, and x cannot equal, uh, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Next one, it's a radical, so it can't be negative, so x has to be greater than or equal to what would get me to the overall value of a negative. I have to set it x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 0 because that's my boundary. I want it to be 0 or bigger. Subtract 5. x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So x is an element of the reals and x is greater than or equal to 5. When things are squared, when things are squared, basically it can be negative, it can be positive, or it can be 0. We would say it could be any real number. X is an element of the reals. The next one, we're going to take what's under the radical and set it greater than or equal to. I'm adding 6 to both sides. I divide by 2. And I get X is greater than or equal to 3. So X is an element of the reals, and X is greater than or equal to 3. All right stating the domain for the given function. So, um, this one, now we have a radical and in the denominator. So it can't be a negative number because of the radical rule. So x is an element of the reals, but then we also have the, it can't be a negative, and it has to be greater than zero. Greater than zero, right? has to be greater than zero. So we have two things to think about. The domain, we can say x is, has to be greater than zero. All right, now in the next one, it's just the fraction rule. So x cannot equal four. It's an element of the reals, and x cannot equal 4. Okay? I don't know why we didn't write x as an element of the reals. We should have for the top one. Okay, the next one. x can be a 0 here. This is getting a little tricky because if it's 0, it's 0 minus 3, and that's okay. It would be a negative 3 in the denominator. It's not under the radical. Square root of 0, so x can be 0, X can be, um, X is greater than or equal to zero, but it can't be 
what number? What would give me that zero there? Okay. What minus three would equal zero? What number minus three would give me zero? Okay. So in this case, it wouldn't be a three, but the overall value of that would have to be a three. And so what would be the square root of something that gives me a three? It would have to be a nine. So x cannot equal nine. X is, can, is greater than or equal to zero, and X is, it also cannot, it's greater than or equal to zero, but X cannot equal nine. It's both. Those are basically the rules. All right. In the denominator on the next one, okay, right here, what would give me a zero? Because remember, I'm in a fraction rule, so it would be three would give me a zero right there. And I'm going to set 2x plus 5. It has to be greater than or equal to, it has to be um, set it equal to 0. Sorry. I'm subtracting 5. 2x plus equals negative 5 divided by 2. And we get x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So x cannot equal 3. And x cannot equal negative 5 over 2, or that would give me two zeros. Okay? It's the element of the reals. And x cannot equal 3, and it cannot equal negative 5 over 2. Okay? Um, why are we saying that it's not an element of the reals? Probably because we've got that radical there in the denominator. Oh, so and because it's not rationalized. So once you have that radical in a denominator, it's not part of, it hasn't been rationalized, so it can't be a real number. All right, graphing. Let's go back to the first step of graphing that we did. I want you to always, this is always going to be your fallback. So when you graph, we're going to make a table, okay? So we want some negatives, we want some positives, and you're going to need enough points, especially if it's an, a unique equation. If it's a line, a linear equation where x is to the first, play, first power, you probably only need to do a couple points. But here you really want to see the picture of that absolute value. So um, actually when I first taught you guys how to graph, I had you do something like this. Or you could do the work. Here's x, here's y. Let's go, let's start with negative 3, and we're doing the absolute value of x minus 2. I'm going to do negative 3 to positive 3. So I'm doing uh, the absolute value of negative 3 minus 2. That's 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, so I'm going across 1, 2, 3, up 1. I'm going to do negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 minus 2 zero. So it's negative two up zero. Then I've got negative one. So that's one minus two is negative one. So I'm doing negative one, negative one, and then I'll do zero. Zero minus two is negative two. Zero going down two, I'm going into my positives. So I get negative 1, right? 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so I'm going across 1 and then down 1. Okay, and then I go 2, get the absolute value, end up with a 0. What do you think 3 is going to be? It's going to be 1, and so I'm doing... 1, 2 across, up 0, and I'm doing 3 across, up 1. Now, I want you to notice a couple different things. Number 1, whenever you have absolute value, you will get what looks like a V. Okay? If this were a linear equation, okay, tell me about the y-intercept. What is it in the equation? Look at your equation, and what would it be, okay? My b is right here, so it's negative 2. 
negative 2. Um, my slope is still 1. Notice it's a slope of 1. But every time you have absolute value, it will be a V. Okay? So, my y-intercept, it's dropping it down. So my basic, um, the f of x, my parent function, it's called the parent function, the basic function before we've done anything, would look something like this. And then when I say negative 2, it drops the vertex down two units. All right, so that's a um, absolute value function. I didn't realize they were doing this. So I could have used theirs. Is it a function? Now, this is also telling me to state the domain and range. Now, domain is your x values. These are your x values. Okay? And these are your y values. So they're talking about all of these. How far can it po the x, x possibly go? Now, when we're talking about x, we're looking at the width on this x-axis. And since this is, basically, we could have infinite amount of points going wider and wider and wider, we would say that x is any real number. Okay? Whereas my y my y, that is your height. If I were to keep going in both directions, notice this pattern right here. Over here I would have a, um, I would have a two and then a three and here a two and a three. But the one thing to remember is that the height wise, it will never go below this point here where the vertex is. Okay, it will never go below this negative 2. So for the y, for the range, we're going to say y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So x is any real number for the domain, and y, so the domain, we're going to say x is such that x is an element of the reals, and for the range, we're going to say, I would accept you just saying x is any real number. And for the range, we're going to say y is such that y is greater than negative 2. Okay? All right, let's try another. Let's make our table. I'm going to go to the table. Okay? Does anybody know what shape this is? I want you to predict what shape, knowing that this is an x squared. And what do you think is going to happen to the vertex based on this b. Okay, so let's make our table. So I'm going to do um, x, and when we're in function notation, instead of y, we're going to write the g of x. Remember, that doesn't mean g times x. It means the g of x, it's the fancy way to write y. So I'm going to start with some negative numbers. Let's do negative 3 squared is 9 minus 5 is 4. And then I'm going to plot the point. Negative 3 across, 4 up. I'm going to do negative 2 squared is 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Okay. Then I'm going to do negative 1 squared minus 5 is negative 4. Then I'm going to do 0 is negative 5. Then we're going to do 1. 1 squared is again negative 4. Notice we're having this mirrored effect. If I do 2 squared, it's 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And then I'm going to draw my line. Well, which it's not going to be a line. It makes a parabola. Hopefully you predicted that. And what happens with the parabola, again, the parent function of y equals x squared would be something like this. And what happens with this minus 5, it drops the vertex down 5 units. Okay. 
Notice, this is going to be very helpful as we start learning. With an x squared, once you know these spots, notice that this person is, this point, sorry, is two units away from the middle. This point is three units in both directions away. So you almost have some free points here when we start graphing later. All right, so now let's look at domain and range. Okay, my domain, how wide can this get? Since it's at a slant, it's eventually going to get, the x's will eventually, we can use any real number. And the range, however, you guess it, you try it, the range would be y is greater than, so we would say x is, y is such that, let's say r equals y is such that y is greater than or equal to, because we'll never see, there'll never be anything down here. So for my y's, I will never have a negative 6, a negative 7. It's only going up in this direction. So y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay? x is such that x is an element of the reals, and y is such that y is greater than or equal to negative 5, and it is a function. All right, this is a kind of graph that you haven't really seen. This is called uh, exponential. It's a perfect example of the coronavirus. So if my exponent is to the negative 2 power, basically what that means is it's not a negative number, it's a fractional amount. Remember, negative exponents are fractional amounts. Okay, it's really 1 over 2 to the second power, so it'd be 1 over 4. Okay, how do we convert that to a fraction? Remember, 2 to the negative 2 power equals, I convert it to a fraction by bringing the base down. This becomes positive, and so that equals 1 over 4. Okay, I'm going to plot that point. Then we have uh, 2 to the negative 1 power, so that would be 1 over 2. Then we have 2 to the 0 power. So the 2 to the 0 equals 1, so that's going to be just when x is 0, meaning 0 across, y is 1. Now I'm doing when x is 1, so y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 8. This is what we call exponential growth. When x is 4, 2 to the 4th would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, it's 16. When x is 5, it's 32. And so it makes this really steep curve. It never comes up. It would just keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the axis, but it will never come. It will never um, curve up on the left side. So that's the way that exponential growth works. It will get closer and closer to the x-axis, but it will never quite get. Because if I kept growing in this direction up here, you know, 2 to the negative 3, it would get, you know, it'd end up being 1 to the eight over 8, and then 2 to the negative 4th would be 1 over 16. So it will get closer and closer, but never actually touch. Okay, in this case, we're going to say our width. Okay, our domain, again, still can be any real number. There's still a slant on the right side, and it keeps going in the left side, so my width is going to go on and on forever. Is it a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test. Okay, so my domain is an element of the reals. My range would be, it's never going to go lower than that x-axis, so on the y-axis, that would be a 0, so it's never 
it's going to be y is such that y is greater than 0, not equal to here. With exponential growth, it will never equal, never touch that x-axis. Does that make sense? It will never touch it because, remember, it's growing. It's going to 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32nd, but it never actually touches the right here. Oops. Never actually touches right here. All right, so that is our lesson, people. Have a good one. Take care. I have homework help today after school.